Hi everyone, I'm Cynthia over at intuitiveandspiritual.com and I'm working on a year-long project called The Life Project and I'm moving into the month of May. So for this video, I'm going to recap a little bit of April and then go into what I'm focusing on for May. I'm also looking at my computer while I do this. So if I'm looking downwards and not at the camera, that's what's going on. So I've got my list of stuff in front of me. Um, <clears throat> so the recap on April was that it was a month of looking forward. And so it included meditation, journaling, mantras, steps, 10,000 steps a day, daily affirmations, finishing my coloring book, and reading The Power of Silence by Carlos Castaneda. And so uh, with regard to meditation, you know, 30 minutes, a, or excuse me, 60 minutes a day for 30 days leads to 1,800 minutes of meditation. And my gosh, it changes you. It, it just affects you subtly if you're still who you are, but it's just profound what you start to feel. Already, just in the one month, I feel a, a real sense of calmness more optimism, more compassion for everyday living thing, for plants, for animals, for the planet. I sometimes get, I get a glowy tinge on things as I work out after meditation. I've only experienced that after the retreat I went on, but it's just kind of one of those things where I know it's, everything's all right right now in this moment. Life is going to be okay. And during stressful situations, I'll go into a deeper state of breathing which is much easier to remember to do. I don't always remember that, so it makes my head a lot easier. And my level of an intuition is higher. Just different events, I can intuit things, which is really cool. Um, and I think that that feeling and that sense will only grow with the progression of this project. The next thing that I worked on each month was journaling. So each day I would do 250 words at least, and then some days I didn't get a chance to journal. It was only like two or three days, and so I would double up the next day. So that wasn't too bad. But there were different things that I would journal on. Um, some issues that came up were managing my time to make sure I fit everything in for this project, and the way I think about energy, and the walking marathon that I'm going to do, and how I will change during the course of this project, how I am already changing, and more. <clears throat> and I already have 13,417 words. I hope to publish the journal at the end of this project, but the idea is that, no, I won't make people read hundreds of thousands of words of journal entries. So I'll pare that down and fluff it out once I have completed the project. But I do hope to, to publish that, and hopefully it will inspire others to try something like this. Every morning after meditation, I recited uh, my mantra of success which is Om Ganapati Ye Namaha, and I'll use my mala beads, which are actually right here. Um, so I'll use my mala beads, count 108 times for me, or actually help me to count 108 times, and then during the course of the day, I'll, I'll repeat the mantra, especially when I'm walking. And I really enjoy saying the mantra because it immediately kind of gets you into a meditative state, and it's easier to get connected with where you're at. If you have a Sanskrit mantra that doesn't make sense in English, but the words are ancient, it's just really cool. I also repeat affirmations to myself, and since the first post about the Life Project, I've added a few more affirmations, ones that just mean more to me, that I've found in different places that uh, just feel so empowering. And, you know, starting the day with meditation from success mantra and just words of empowerment, just Oh, just, just create this great feeling that, you know what, today is going to be a great day. And yeah, I just, I just love it. Every day I got to 10,000 steps, or if I didn't, it's because there was a substitute physical activity that I would do. I love to mountain bike. I love to road bike. And so if I went biking on those days, or if I worked extensively in the garden, so three or four hours of garden, I consider that a good substitute for the 10,000 steps. And so if you go to my blog, there is a graph of all the days, starting on April 7th, when I got my trusty pedometer, um, that you can kind of see the graph of the days. And some days I had a lot more than others, but the minimum was always 10,000. And so I actually achieved 
Now today is going to be interesting. It's 4.41 in the afternoon. I have a thousand steps and it's about four miles to get 10,000 steps in. So I have walked the equivalent of maybe half a mile. <laughs> so I'm going to have to do some walking after this post and it'll be, it'll be kind of interesting. Um, something else that I'm really excited about is the Tree of Life coloring book that I've completed. I don't have it here with me at the moment. It's in another room, but I completed 27 drawings. I'm compiling it into book format. You know, that whole compilation thing that made me think. It represents that whole journey, and it was born from the idea of the tree of intention that I created in the first part of January. And just from there, I see my intentions written daily on the little ornaments that I put on the tree. So it just inspires me to keep going. So the next thing is The Power of Silence. <clears throat> this book is amazing. When I first started reading it, I didn't get into it right away. I didn't quite understand all of the stories. But it, but the way Castaneda kind of tells the stories is you find out later what was going on earlier. And so a lot of times they'll present a concept first or they'll present a story, and you won't quite know what's going on. And then as you read more in the book, it sort of explains all that stuff. And there's this, you can see where I have flagged different pages. I didn't want to mark up the book with notes, but um, <clears throat> I have flagged the different pages to just remember really to pull out the things that my font says I'm supposed to be looking at. The lesson, the biggest takeaway from this is that inner knowing, that inner silence, that listening to yourself. Um, it also talks about something called the assemblage point, which you'll have to read it if you want to know more about them. But Don Juan is what's called a sorcerer, which doesn't have the typical meaning that you would think of sorcerer, but he gets Castaneda's assemblage point to him. And when that happens, it's kind of like a state of mind. And amazing things happen. And so I kind of think of that as like, you know, when you're meditating and you get into a theta state or even different state. You can get into a gamma state too, which is really high energy. And stuff happens when you get there. And if you can stay there and keep it sustained, as he suggests in this book, then, you know, just amazing things happen. So I really, really enjoyed that book. And it, it was all about inner knowing and introspection. And I thought it would align very well with this project. So moving into the month of May, the list is to declutter. So I have, okay, so I have a small house in a small closet. It was built in 1948, so the closet is close to 40. But it is stuff to begin with. And it's not because I go out shopping all the time. It's not because I do all this swapping of the seasons or the latest styles. I'm actually kind of not that way. Um, but people are giving me stuff or I inherit things or I get hand-me-downs or I have something on sale at a convention over the years, that has added up. And so I want to pare down to 33 items. Why the number 33? It's just an important number to me, especially right now. I keep seeing the number 33 everywhere, time and time again. And I always used to feel like it's a sign from above or from relations out there in the world that I need to keep going with what I'm doing. And so that is my encouragement and motivation to keep going with what I'm doing. Not only this project, but the things that give me passion and excitement. So when I pare down to 33 items, it's going to be like shirts, shorts, skirts, sweaters, that sort of thing. I won't count for my pajamas, socks, water bottles, accessories, coats, that sort of thing. Um, although I will go through and pare those out because I have extra to dust off and move around. But I want to bother doing this because it just seems like decluttering also is a mental process where then you can find things you need, you can sort of clean things as much. You, you, in, in that symbolic clearing out physically, it sort of creates a clearing out in your mind. And you don't have to spend precious brain power thinking about these kinds of decisions if it's really only the end goal. And there's some famous people who did that. Steve Jobs always wore those mock turtlenecks with jeans. Barack Obama wearing navy blue or black suits. Angela Merkel, who's the uh, president of Germany, 
she always wears blue. So, like, she has different colors of them, but that's something she always wears. Vera Wang always wears, like, Mark Zuckerberg always wears a gray shirt and jeans. And, you know, th this might be a more of a U.S. phenomenon. Abroad, you don't see people with these closets full of stuff. Um, and I kind of like the idea of people just carrying around and keeping it simple. And so there are going to be two phases to what I do. The first one is paring everything down to try to get to that number 33, but also to make sure that everything matches everything else. Then phase two, as those clothes burn out and I need to replace them, then eventually I kind of want to adopt a new look. It doesn't make sense to me to get rid of all this stuff and declutter and then suddenly, oh, but I have to go buy 10 pairs of shirts. Well, I don't have those because they're not my color. Um, but, but yeah, so I want to kind of eventually incorporate a uniform just where I never have to think about what I wear. But in the meantime, I just want to be really responsible in the way I approach the house. The next thing I'll look at are simplifying my daily expenses and being more mindful when it comes to spending. You know, how do I spend my daily expenses? How do I um, spend on my clothes? Or as I'm sure happens to many of us, we go in the store for something that we truly want. In my case, it was a light fixture. So I went to the hardware store thinking on buying a $35 light fixture and $250 later, I walked out with plant seeds and plant pots and mulch and soil and more plants and flowers and while that was all really fun and it made me really happy because then I had money to live another day, which then affected the steps. Sometimes these things affect each other. Um, but what it comes down to is I want to be mindful about my decisions and I want to start paying down when things aren't necessary. I also hope, as I mentioned, to launch my own book of life or the tree of life and target date is somewhere in mid-May depends on when I get the proofs back and things like that, but I hope to do that. And I want to begin a new book. I originally was thinking that I would publish an, a visionary fiction book as part of this project, and I intend to do that, but I may switch it around a little bit in favor of creating things that will benefit people and might be a little bit more sellable. Not that visionary fiction isn't sellable, that's not it at all, but writing a book is an intense process, and it does take a while, and I'm hoping that maybe I can get my own momentum going for creating things that um, I can put on Amazon. So we'll see. We'll see. I will feel and intuit when the time comes to see what I need to do. The next thing, and this is very near and dear to my heart, is the marathon launch for Think Grow. So, th so I'm training to walk a marathon. This is something I've always wanted to do was walk and not run a marathon. And I looked all over the internet and I've looked all over the country for something that would fit with the scope and sequence of this project. And I found a few, but the, the walks that I found were either very far away, not in the time zone that I wanted, or their cause was not aligned with something that I wanted. Now, all those causes are great, but I want to march for social justice and I want to march for climate change and I want to march for just sustainability and the planet and, and doing good and I feel like this is the time to do it. And so I eventually want to create a pledge page on my website and so if I complete the project then the people who have pledged will then donate to a charity that they say they are going to do it. And so some of the charities that I have all, um, or actually all the charities that I have, all strive for social justice of some type. And so they're fighting for or working for equal rights, working for equal rights for minorities, working for the rights of the disabled, or for women, or for silkworms, or for immigrants, or for um, uh, people who are labeled for their religious practices or something like that. Um, and so I want to address that. I want to do what I can to call attention to, yes, we can have equality, we can have love, we can be equal, all of us, and live happily ever after. 
And so that is one piece of this project. I will start May 15th, or well, mid-May, uh, the training. And the reason it's mid-May and not June is because in two weeks, or in the first two weeks of July, I will be traveling. And so I want to allow for that. But otherwise, the marathon itself, which I'm just going to create my own route, will be in Asheville, North Carolina. I don't live there, but I'm going to have people bring me there. And it will be Labor Day weekend on Saturday, September 4th. And I encourage folks to join me if they want to. They can do their own marches in their own towns. Or um, they can also donate to their own charities, too. So if you have one like I have in Asheville that you just really think is that you need to be spoke of this marathon march, by all means. That especially applies if you live abroad. The idea of living well and spending less. So I have this book here, and admittedly, it is a library book, but I love the library. I found this book, um, and it is 12 Secrets of the Good Life by Ruth Secret. I think that's how you say her name. I'm looking forward to reading this. It's always fun to get good ideas for just simplifying to help yourself to succeed. And so I thought this might be a great book in terms of decluttering and, you know, living great without having to stress about it. And so that's what we're doing for May. If you have any questions, you can head over to my blog and I will be happy to answer them. And thank you so much for watching. I will see you soon. Peace and blessings.